Welcome to Managing Asia. I'm Christine Tan. I'm here in Batam, Indonesia to meet the man who has helped to put this island on the map as an industrial and tourist destination. He is Chris Willowan, founder of Chitra Mas Group. All this land was developed by Chris Willowan and his family. More than 700 hectares of industrial estate and property for leisure. The Indonesian tycoon ranked among the country's richest is recognized as one of the savviest players in oil and gas there. He found a sweet spot in the sector as early as the 1970s. At that time, I see that the business of servicing energy industry, especially in the oil and gas, are mainly predominantly controlled or operated by a foreign national company. There is a vision or a dream that the natural resources could be processed uh, domestically. It was here in Batam, a 50-minute ferry ride from Singapore, that Wiluwan struck gold. Once a jungle and swampland, he convinced his early customers to relocate their storage facilities to the island. Most of the operation uh, of oil and gas in Indonesia is uh, done by supporting services from outside Indonesia, in this case, Singapore, uh, just basic storage facility services. So I said, well, you know, even if we have 1% of the operation done in the country, um, that would be a, a good opportunity for me to come in. Uh, of course, at the time when we came here, there was no telephone, there was no roads, uh, there was no electricity. So that was a big challenge. Was it tough getting the support of the Indonesian government to see your idea, to support your idea? Fortunately, I have people who trusted in me, that's why I was lucky. I think at that time the government uh, have the philosophy of giving opportunity for a local industry. Uh, I think now it follows throughout the world. From a logistics provider, the business evolved to repairing steel pipes. And soon he was making the pipes and drilling equipment for oil and gas, creating jobs for the local people. I like to see a business where I could make a difference. A business where it can not only, of course, make profit, but also to give a contribution uh, to oneself and a difference uh, in terms of the community around us. It's easier said than done because these foreign big multinational oil and gas companies were initially very skeptical, very yes. reluctant to accept locally produced products. Do you remember how hard you had to work to get the first few jobs? Yeah, I remember. I think in 1987, uh, I had the opportunity to supply at that time mobile, before it became Exxon Mobil, requirement for drilling equipment. This is very high spec drilling equipment at that time for the LNG facility in Arun in North Sumatra. And although I won the tender, but they were very reluctant to award it to us because of the high specification. They asked uh, Mobil uh, to give us the opportunity. So we produced it with quite a uh, difficult, uh, I would say, inspection because we had almost 24 hours infection for one month of our production. I was it stressful? Say, very stressful because, uh, you know, I had to be there. I'm there with all my colleagues. How to make long sure. did it take for you to pass those inspections? For one month. One month. But we passed it. So that was very proud. And I uh, informed all my colleagues. I said, look, if we have the opportunity, we will be able to do it. From four machines and 40 workers in 1983, Chitramas Group has grown into a force in oil field equipment manufacturing and distribution, generating revenues of over a billion US dollars. The gutsy businessman has also expanded globally through high-profile acquisitions, including Singapore-listed KS Energy. Five years ago, he took another gamble by going up the value chain to rig building. The main thing is that I have very good partners. Uh, we talk to many of our partners, not also in, uh, in Indonesia, but in Japan, in the US try to have their network, and by that time I have a uh, sufficient network. So we get all the consultants, the experts to come in and teach us. So it was a mad scramble? Yeah, it was a scramble, and I think we were bleeding towards that. Because how much were you that, bleeding? I think we lost a lot of money. I won't mention in how much, but it's a lot of money. Uh, but it's worth it because we are proud. 
the drilling rig is drilling now in the second largest, going to be the second largest field in Indonesia. It's a Chepu block and it's about, I think, four months ahead of, uh, of the program. Were there any invaluable lessons learned in the process? I think the lesson we have at that time is to uh, tighten up our cooperation in our teamwork uh, because we are lucky also when the problem arises, so there's lots of problem that we encounter and ExxonMobil is very, very tough in the inspection and the grid, is to learn uh, not to blame each other. You know, we make a lot of mistakes, but not to blame each other, but to uh, have a good cooperation with our team, our management, uh, to solve it. You've lost money on your first land rig. You've since built two more land yes. rigs. Have you made back your money? Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> I mean, uh, the objective is to, in, uh, in business, is of course, one of the objectives is to make profit. But before that, uh, we like to make a profit and make a difference uh, that we can show that Indonesia can make a drilling rig. And now we attract uh, many interested parties from overseas to make the drilling rig. In you Brazil. know, rig fabrication is very competitive. The market is controlled, the bulk of it, 70%, controlled by Singapore, by well-established players like Sembawang and Keppel. As a small player, how do you compete? Sembawang and Keppel, they produce 70% of the world jack-up rigs and I admire them because they have managed to get all this technology which was basically before controlled by uh, rig, the yards in, uh, in Scotland and in Houston. So they managed it over the years to bring it over here. But I can see also the challenges for them. They have challenges of uh, getting uh, foreign workers they have challenges in space, the challenges in cost. So we don't want, we cannot compete with them, but what we like to do is work together. And as you see that we have cooperation with Sembawang, you know, to fabricate some of the stuff over here, we learn. And we also have cooperation with Capital. We, so you're we working do. with them yeah, as opposed to competing with them? With them. No, I think uh, in this stage at the moment, uh, we like to have a, a situation where you have added value in terms of uh, cooperation with Singapore, uh, complementary with Singapore, where we have the space, we have the, the labor, and again, um, to build it together so that we can be a factor in a global uh, industry in the region. Today, oil and gas is your core business, making up more than half of your overall business empire. But the fall in oil price has led to concerns that there might be some order cancellations. Are you worried? Have you seen any orders drop out? Um, of course, I think, uh, I mean, I've experienced this one, Christine, over my 30 years in oil and gas. Prices gone down, prices went up, you know, but as long as uh, the requirement of energy is always there, you cannot replace hydrocarbon yet. You know, you still have to have hydrocarbon, the oil and gas. Uh, our business is there. Now our business itself in the region, for example, like Indonesia, uh, we used to produce 1.5 million barrels. Now we produce below 900,000. And the only way, and we still import lots of the product. We are a net importer now. So there's lots of opportunities still in the region that we can contribute because we are not a builder of rigs, so to speak. We build rigs for us to operate. Uh, we are actually uh, supplying the services for the drilling. So. We are also not that big. We don't have a big fleet. I think we, our fleet is about only 11 rigs. So we are niche in the market. So yes, of course, I think we can feel the wind. Uh, but again, you know, that experience I've done over many years, over the 30 years. Indonesia is increasing its oil and gas exploration. Where do you see oil and gas spend under new President Jokowi? There's a lot of gas, you know, in Indonesia. But I think the challenge is the infrastructure. They need to build a lot of uh, terminals, the gas terminal. They need to build a uh, gas line, uh, pipeline. So that is the thing that to distribute. We have um, also a lot of alternative energy in terms of geothermal. So that's another thing that has not really been uh, processed or been exploited. So there's a lot of uh, potential for Indonesia and the demand is there. So given the potential you see in your home market here in Indonesia, how much more business do you want to do? in Indonesia in the next three to five years? Yeah, I think if we can produce over the next five years, maybe 
you know, like rigs, 20 rigs. Uh, even, for example, if we supply, continue to supply the pipes itself for all the drilling, at the moment, 70% uh, of our production is uh, exported uh, throughout the world. Uh, there is still some issues where there's imported of pipes going into the country um, with the uh, block, or let's say the, the stopping of uh, in, in uh, US uh, export of pipes from China, lots of the Chinese pipe coming into the country. So we like to see whether we can uh, increase our domestic uh, supply. And I think uh, the other thing is to keep up going up to the value chain. You know, we go into the rig side, the land rig. I like to have a dream, I hope it's not too long, to go up to, to work with offshore rig, which is even more complicated. Uh, one offshore rig will cost about $200 million. Uh, land rig will cost about $30 million. So it's a big So that's where the job. money is? Yeah, it's also the challenge. Okay, and uh, but then I have to be careful because you know I have to really make sure that the team is there. We're still talking, yeah, how to to do that, and uh, we feel that because now we're operating, we're drilling in the Middle East. Our group in KS Energy, we're drilling in the Middle East. We're drilling in uh, the largest field in Indonesia, in Chevron, and we got award as the best uh, drilling company. We are drilling in uh, Chepu, which is the second largest uh, field in Indonesia. We're drilling for Pertamina in West Madura. With the performance and the knowledge of the drilling, we feel that we can then build better equipment. We can strategize and build better equipment for the oil industry. So when do you think you'll be able to fully build an offshore jack-up rig yourself? Well, our hope is that by 2016 uh, and 2015, we can have something that not probably the full, but part, a big part of it to be done in, in Batam. Uh, that's what I I dream, but you the know. The whole rig? Depends. The whole rig. How long will it take? another year of that. 2017. 2017, yeah, maybe. We hope.